Uh, today, we talk about one of the best changes we can make, yet one with huge consequences. Worldwide, about one-fifth of all greenhouse gas pollution comes from land transportation fuels. Worldwide, about uh, uh, in Oregon, it is about 40%. Locally, in central Lane County, uh, using transportation fuels may be as much as two-thirds of direct local emissions. Uh, of all transportation-related emissions, 59% come from light vehicles. Those are the kinds of things most of us drive worldwide. But there are times when nearly all of us need to use the family car or operate a pickup truck or just uh, to get basic things done. Our cities have been designed for over 100 years with the automobile in mind. Most of us cannot do our daily chores without using one. Here is where we talk about replacing that old, inefficient, internal combustion engine with a modern, up-to-date, fun, quiet, quick, low-cost electric vehicle. So first, I'm gonna define some terms so that you uh, will understand what I'm talking about today. And somehow or another, I'm having to re reset this screen each time. Not sure why. Uh, there, there are, in addition to the, the plain old uh, gasoline-powered car that we, most, that we all know about, uh, there are really four kinds of, of the newer vehicles. One, the first one, uh, which I'm pointing out with my cursor, hope you can see it, is the hybrid electric vehicle. And that's a vehicle that runs entirely on gasoline, but it increases its efficiency by storing some of the energy from the uh, internal combustion engine uh, in a battery, which is then used to drive an electric motor and in to increase the uh, efficiency. My old Prius uh, got about 50 miles per gallon uh, because of that, and much better than it would have done otherwise. Uh, the second one uh, in, on my little chart is the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It's the same kind of vehicle, uh, except that it plugs in, so that when you get home, uh, you can plug it in and charge up that battery. Uh, some Volt, uh, Chevy Volt users, uh, because the, the battery's pretty good size, uh, are able to get 600 miles per gallon on their uh, gasoline because they almost never use any. Driving around town, the 30 miles or so that, or less that most of us do in a day, can be done uh, with the battery alone if you plug it in every night uh, or whenever you get the chance. The third kind is the battery electric vehicle, and that's the one we're gonna talk about today. Uh, that's, that, that's the one that you've already heard about, uh, including that Model 3. And that has no internal combustion engine, no gas tank. All of the energy comes entirely from the electricity that you get by plugging the car in when you're not using it. And the fourth kind, one we don't have in Oregon, is the hydrogen uh, fuel cell electric vehicle, which I'm really not going to talk about because uh, we don't have any hydrogen uh, for sale here, so can't use it here. Um, one of the, some of the benefits of electric vehicles are that they significantly reduce the amount of carbon emissions that uh, come from the energy uh, that we use. Uh, your normal internal combustion engine car uh, uh, puts out a, a great deal more in Eugene than the electric vehicle does. And the only reason the electric vehicle puts out any is because eWeb still buys some of its energy, or some of its power uh, from uh, coal-fired uh, or uh, gas, uh, uh, natural gas-fired uh, uh, burners that uh, generate electricity. Most of the rest of it comes from hydro or from renewables. Um, this is another way of looking at it. If you were to take the whole area that we're in, and you can see I'm kind of circling that on the map, uh, the amount of uh, carbon emissions that would come from an electric vehicle is equivalent to if your car could do 102 miles per gallon. And this was in 2018. Since that time, several of the coal-fired power plants in Wyoming that feed power to uh, Portland General Electric or Pacific Power have closed down because we're getting more and more renewables. And so that number is even higher. But you notice, even in the tight parts of the country where things, where almost all of the energy comes from coal, uh, the electric car still does significantly better. And these numbers are going to improve uh, rapidly over time as those coal-fired power plants uh, close down. Um, now I wanna tell you a little bit about my experience with electric cars. The climate emergency has been a major area of focus for me since 2010. I ordered a new underdevelopment 
a, a better electric vehicle in 2011, a Tesla Model S, and you see a picture of it here. I finally received it in my driveway in, in October 2012. In 2013, I drove it to the Capitol in Salem every session day with a full battery uh, every morning uh, from having charged it overnight in my garage, uh, about 135 miles. From January to June, I put about 20,000 miles on that Model S with that just that daily commute and with no difficulties at all. It was an extremely reliable car, even though it was only about the 500th car that Tesla had made of this model. All the car, the, the car was a joy to drive, very fast accelerating, quiet, comfortable, and very sure-footed uh, in bad weather. A couple of times I had to accelerate out of trouble at speeds none of my gas-powered cars would ever have managed. One of the huge advantages of this kind of car is its safety. One of the reasons that I bought this car and parked it every day in the parking structure of our legislative park was to make sure my colleagues saw it and understood that the age of electric vehicles had finally arrived. This car just worked. It just did everything I needed for an automobile to do. Uh, there are several areas uh, that most people are concerned about when thinking about buying an electric vehicle, uh, whether it's a new car, an SUV, a pickup truck, or what have you. And I've sort of classified those into four groups. And then the fifth one is what we're doing today, consumer awareness, affordability, availability, fueling, and safety. So first let's talk a little bit about affordability. That old uh, Model S that I bought in 2012 was a very, very expensive car, several times more expensive than any car I'd ever bought before in my life. The newer uh, Model 3s and Model Ys from Tesla cost about a third as much money uh, as the car that I bought then. And I, I looked uh, online uh, yesterday and found that there are six new 200 mile electric vehicles, 200 miles or better electric vehicles in our area for sale for less than $30,000. So that's happening. It's coming, uh, affordability is coming. Fuel and maintenance costs are much lower. There's no uh, oil to change. There's no spark plugs to change. Regular maintenance in most cases is not necessary at all. There's one thing you have to do, and that is uh, keep your windshield wiper fluid full. Annual fuel costs in Eugene are something like $800 less than driving a 29 mile per gallon gasoline powered car the same distance. And you can see this little chart that uh, illustrates that. Uh, they're very cheap uh, to operate because of fueling costs being so much lower. Uh, and in addition to that, you can reduce the purchase price even more. If you only own a significant amount of tribal taxes, you get up to a $7,500 rebate the year you buy the car. And in uh, uh, Oregon, a new car rebate of $2,500, uh, sorry, the federal tax credit uh, is the federal item, the state rebate, an actual reduction in the purchase cost of the car or a check to you later is $2,500 for a new car. If you make less than $70,000 a year, you could also qualify for a $2,500 charge ahead rebate in Oregon. And that's on a new or a used car. There are uh, used lease uh, available now, uh, good commuter car uh, for seven or $8,000. And this significantly reduces the cost. How about availability? There are many new models of this year. There will be many, and there are many more coming out later. This is a picture of the Tesla Cybertruck with a motorcycle or a, a four-wheeler in the, in the bed, uh, driving up the ramp that, that, the, uh, that the Cybertruck has. There are 500,000 of these on order. Deliveries will start this year. Um, this next uh, picture shows a, a Chevy Bolt, uh, a, a Tesla like mine, uh, and the Leaf. Uh, all of these are available now. The Leaf, by the way, used to have an 80 mile range. The new ones have up to 220 miles of range. Uh, and so it's a real uh, traveling car now, if you want that. And the pickup trucks are coming. Uh, the Lucid pickup truck shown here, but also General Motors and Ford are, are producing pickup trucks and several other uh, new uh, companies. This is a picture of the Ford Mustang Mach-E, which is available now. Uh, but you better hurry if you want one. I think they're mostly sold. Uh, a great SUV 
uh, I think 300 mile range and for less than $40,000. Uh, the, this, uh, the Volkswagen ID4 is available now in Europe and will be available soon in the United States. This is probably the most hyped car yet and it will be available in large quantities and it costs quite a bit less than the Ford Mustang. And don't forget about the e-bike, the e-scooter, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Segway that's available, and of course, our own locally produced Mark Fronmeyer's Arkimoto Fund. Um, sales of electric vehicles have increased enormously. This is a sales chart of the sales, worldwide sales of the first of the top five uh, sellers. Actually, there's one missing on here, a very tiny car sold in China that outsells all of them. Um, and uh, the local sales in the United States are at the bottom. Note, you note that Tesla has almost all of those uh, sales in, uh, in Oregon, and sorry, in the United States in uh, 2020, but th uh, the others are going to be greatly increasing their sales here uh, this year. And uh, Tesla, of course, is opening its new factory in, in Berlin. And a lot of the sales that want to go to Europe uh, will now be coming to the United States. So there's no problem uh, with availability. I want to show you the S-curve. This curve applies to any new technology. It applied to washing machines when they came along, black and white televisions, color televisions, the cell phone adoption. And even 100 years ago, uh, to the adoption of the automobile, uh, over the horse-drawn uh, wagon. Um, and in Europe, uh, they're, they're somewhere about here. About 11% of all the vehicles sold in Europe in January were electric. Um, the United States is a little bit behind that, but we are about to hit the acceleration point. And as that happens, the uh, sale of uh, gasoline-powered cars will significantly decline. Um, this is another graph of the same kind of thing. Now. How about getting around? One of the big questions that people have is, how do I charge the thing and how do I avoid running out of fuel in the middle of the road? I will tell you first thing that this is something everyone worries about before they buy an electric car. And after they've had it for a week, they never worry about it again. Uh, and that's because fueling is completely different from the old gasoline powered cars. You're all familiar with getting in your car, starting it up, and looking at that gas gauge and seeing it's down near the E and knowing that you have to find that half an hour or that 40 minutes or that hour today to go buy more gasoline. That will never happen in your electric car, assuming that you can plug it in at home. Um, so that's what most of us do 95% of the time. And for most people, a standard outlet will work just fine. You drive less than 30 miles a day, which most of us do, and uh, that regular old outlet will charge your car at four miles an hour overnight. And uh, you do the arithmetic, eight times four is 32. That will give you all the range that you need most of the time. But if you need more at home, you can install what amounts to a dryer plug with uh, a charger called an EVSE that will provide you a lot more than that. This particular one uh, will charge at 3.6 kilowatt hours the Tesla charger will charge it up to 72, uh, up to 70 kilowatt hours, uh, and, and therefore can charge much faster. But most of the time, those are overkill. Um, on the road, uh, when you need to go further than your the range of your battery, uh, there are DC fast chargers that are being installed all over the place, and you've probably seen uh, many of them. These will charge your, your car for 100 to 150 miles, somewhere between uh, 20 minutes 15 minutes for some cars, and an hour. Um, and uh, they, they use either the CSS plug-in, uh, which is the European and the American style plug, or the Chatamo, which is the uh, East Asian plug that the Leaf uses, or the Tesla plug, which of course all uh, the Tesla cars use. And the uh, Electrify America, which is the uh, Volkswagen offshoot, is installing hundreds of these uh, fast chargers on our highways and in, in some uh, of the larger, uh, in the parking lots of some of the larger stores uh, like Target and, uh, and Walmart. Uh, the older ones are Blink, uh, EVgo, which we have fewer of in Oregon, but which are uh, handy in much of the rest of the country. And of course, the Tesla superchargers. 
Tesla, only Teslas can charge there, but there are a lot of them. A new one just went in in Ontario, Oregon, uh, uh, along with the, new, the, newer, the next newest one in Bend. Uh, but uh, compared to when I first started uh, in 2012, the only place I knew to charge was in my own garage. There are now many, many uh, opportunities. Um, and there, there are even innovative ideas, if I can get to the next slide. Uh, notice that there's a sign, electrified sign here that has more energy than it needs. Somebody has added an electric vehicle charger to that. Uh, so someone has plugged in, they've gone off to their studios or the, or the grocery store or something else, and they were able to plug in uh, right on, on the extra electricity that the sign did not need. A whole bunch of, uh, of uh, uh, street lights that used to use uh, sodium uh, lights and that were very, very uh, heavy electric users now use LED lights and these could easily be added to those. Um, so how about reliability and safety? How long will a drive battery last? How safe are these cars? Um, uh, you know, if you, if you have a, a, a cell phone, you know you gotta replace the battery every couple of years. But here's a scatter plot of the Tesla Model S and the Model X cars, and it shows the, uh, the uh, uh, amount of de degradation of these batteries over time. 150,000 miles or 250,000 kilometers, there's still very, very little uh, degradation. You'll notice that there's a, uh, an outlier here very early on. That battery was replaced under warranty. Um, and so uh, you don't have to worry about the, the battery. In fact, there's a lot of recycling going on uh, or discussion about recycling of batteries going on now. Uh, but there aren't enough of them available to be recycled yet. And so the ones that there are are being stored and the companies that are gonna do it are making plans for the future. How about the construction of these cars? I talked about safety. Here's a skateboard with a motor in the back, four wheels, and in between uh, the uh, batteries, uh, the heavy part of the car, uh, uh, lying down at the at the bottom of the of the vehicle. Uh, here's another uh, image. This one of a Tesla with the body of the car superimposed on the top. Um, uh, these. Uh, why do I why am I showing you this? The construction is important. Uh, the crumple zones are enormous in the front and in the back. You will never have an internal combustion hot internal combustion engine sitting in your lap if you have a a front end accident. Uh, because uh, of the enormous uh, crumple zones. The center of gravity in these cars is very, very low. That's also true for pickup trucks and for SUVs that are made on these kind of platforms. And, and therefore, uh, it's almost impossible to roll them. Uh, the uh, Model X, which is an SUV, uh, was not rollable during the, the safety test, where you can roll a, a gasoline-powered SUV quite easily because the center of gravity is so high. Uh, and now I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm ready to answer some questions, but I wanna let you know first that uh, Emerald Valley Electric Vehicle Association is ready to answer your questions, or you can join us and join in the fun. Uh, or you can ask me questions. Uh, the Electric Vehicle Association uh, during non-COVID times puts on events. Uh, uh, we allow some, uh, sometimes some of us allow people to drive our cars. And the object is to answer people's questions, to educate them, and, uh, and help them uh, determine that, that they want to be in on the electric vehicles too. Go to Plug Share to find out where the other chargers are, Plug Star to figure out what cars are available in our area. And if you are looking at a particular car and you think one of our people might own one, ask an owner at evEVA.org. We'll get you answers to your questions.